insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 107. I am Kiwi. I'm your host, <laughs> Joseph Whalen, and my vibrant and energetic co host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? I guess today? I kind of had to. Got to perk up real quick there, huh? <laughs> With an intro like that, you know, got to give you a little jolt for, the, for Thanks. the show. I appreciate it. So, how are you doing today, sweetie? I'm doing okay. It's, mm. you know, almost the end of the work week. So, it is, it is indeed almost the end. But that never gets here fast enough. Does no, it? it never does. But, you know, it's okay. Right. But that's not what we're talking about today. What are we talking about today? Today, we're going to be talking <laughs> about, in our Disney detective, Disney's Imagineering uh, Project Kiwi in the works, and a Disney fan complaining uh, uh, about wokeness. Yes. Was it? Wokeness. And the, I don't even know what that is, so you're going to have to explain right. that. <laughs> and the response... Uh, to his complaints. Which are priceless. Yes, so, but, I did that, read those. Yeah. Uh, then in our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy, Anakin is being voiced again for a new Star Wars animated project. Dun, dun, dun. Which is yet to be officially announced. Right. And Ewan McGregor felt humiliated <laughs> by the idea of Disney casting somebody else for the Star Wars series he's in. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't think he did TV, though, so that was interesting. Hmm. In our entertainment news, we've got a, got a bunch of news in entertainment news. Uh, New Jersey's largest arcade is planned for the Showboat Casino in Atlantic City. And we have some Captain America. You trimmed it down. Yeah. You threw me off. Because I still have it up in the, uh, in the screen, too. Okay. <sighs> okay. What are you talking are you, about? Did you take to both of those... Uh, articles out? No, they're both there. Oh, see, There's... now you're summing it up in the one. Yeah. This is why I don't let you write these these intros. Well, anymore. you know what? If I do a horrible <laughs> job, then Wait, either. No, no, that's the that's the husband philosophy. If you don't want to do something, you do a bad job at it. See? And then you're never asked mm -hmm. to do it again. Oh, I was trying. Anyway, so we have a couple of uh, Captain America uh, stories as well. And then we'll finish up with our insightful picks of the week. In this week's episode of Insights into Entertainment <laughs> Follies. <laughs> da, 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 da. Hey! Uh, we'll be right back to get into our Disney detective. Go for Disney detective. You are so the place it's not even funny i don't even know what to talk about um so this story popped up it was actually a tech story uh from techcrunch.com and it was talking about one of uh disney's imagineering's project which is project kiwi which is a free walking robot that will you know basically make you believe that groot is real um, so it's a, it's a really interesting story. They kind of go through, um, a lot of the ins and outs. Cause again, it is a, a tech, uh, tech savvy, uh, article. Uh, so they talk about a, a lot of stuff. Um, but what's interesting is they have a, a video that shows kind of the evolution of, uh, you know, how they, they come to, you know, make this robot. And he kind of starts out with just you know, his legs, and then they kind of give him a little body, and then they have him, you know, basically walking around, uh, you know, the lab, and also 
the office building and kind of interacting with other people. And at one point he, he goes to fall over and there are people with, with pillows going to catch him because he's a really expensive, you know, toy. Um, but the idea is obviously at some point to have him walking around the park, you know, interacting with other guests. And obviously we've seen the advancement of, you know, audio animatronics turned into robots even at the various parks. But again, most of them are, you know, situated at a ride or on a ride where they don't just get up and, and free walk. So yeah, with the pillows, I thought that was, that was kind of cute. Um, so this is, you know, pretty advanced stuff and looks <laughs> really, really adorable. It's almost, you know, kind of reminds me of uh, the Transformer uh, Optimus Prime, you know, like, how much does this one cost? I'm guessing more than, you know, a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> so who knows, you know, when we'll we'll actually see, uh, you know, Groot walking around the, the parks. So, you know, what this <clears throat> reminds me of a couple of years back, they did uh, a project, a free walking project of the audio animatronic dinosaur that they had. Yes. In Animal Kingdom. Yes. Right? Mm hmm. And that one, but because that one was not, it wasn't, um, it was controlled. It was remote right, controlled. Right. Uh, and it interacted with people mm -hmm. as well. And they've done other things. They've done right. remote controlled interactive uh, trash bins and right. stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, they've always had interactive robots of, of some sort throughout the park, uh, you know, and there, I even remember when I worked at Great Adventure, you know, there was somebody, we had a little, you know, remote control robot, you know, that walked around and, and basically the guy was off in the corner, yeah. you know, you could always spot him, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, in, in the corner, uh, you know, running the whole thing. So it's kind of common, but to have it just, you know, go on its own. Yeah. Is there any particular reason that they picked Groot for the subject on this? No, it didn't didn't say in 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 the article. It was didn't just Didn't know if there was some foreshadowing to Well, and that's one of the things too is that they actually had I don't know if they still I think they had stopped doing it, but when Gal uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 came out, they had a meet and greet with Star-Lord and they had baby Groot in the potted plant that uh, you could go and interact with. So I'm wondering, because now Groot's a teenager, if it was just kind of another way to kind of, you know, where he's too small to be an actual person, maybe. Right, so that's right. why they went with him. Interesting. Cool. Well, it'll be interesting to see how they how mm -hmm. they utilize that in the in the parks in the near yeah, future. Yeah, huh? yeah. So tell us about wokeness <laughs> ruining the Magic Kingdom. So a self-proclaimed Disney fan caused a stir on social media after an op-ed that he wrote was published by the Orlando Sentinel entitled "I Love Disney World, but Wokeness is Ruining the Experience." So basically he goes on and, you know, he says that Disney's decision to bow to political correctness and the Twitter mob has sucked some of the magic out of his experience at Walt Disney World. Uh, he says, um, you know, that Disney's a unique, uh, you know, the ability to create magic from, you know, an immersive experience. And he says that, you know, when I stand in Galaxy's Edge or Fantasyland, I know that I'm in a theme park. But, you know, through the immersion and my willingness to set the real world aside, something magical happens. And that now the spell will be broken when the immersive experience is shattered by the real world. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, it, you just have to read it like that, um, you know, and he goes on to say that, you know, and we had talked about this. This was one of the articles we talked about just the other week when Disney came out and said they were, you know, changing a bunch of their policies that have been in place to be more inclusive for their cast members and you know, change the, the different costumes, you know, to make them feel more comfortable and allow certain hairstyles and, you know, tattoos if it's an appropriate for 
where, you know, they're working. Um, so he basically goes to say that, you know, he doesn't like that the new policy is going to allow cast members to have, you know, haircuts and tattoos. And he even says, you know, is, ta- is, is Tinkerbell going to have a sle- sleeve tattoo? Because that's going to totally kill it. Um, you know, and, and then he, he goes on and, and, and says that, you know, and, and of course he has to say, full disclosure, I am a Christian and a conservative Republican. So the people who run Disney and I do not see eye to eye. He goes on and says, you know, regardless of the corporation, you know, they're making all these political moves and they shouldn't. And, you know, then he goes on to say how he's upset that Trader Sam was removed from the Jungle Cruise. Um, (laughs) And, you know, and that how could that offend anybody? And, you know, he's a Trader Sam is a South American indigenous shrunken head dealer, you know, who comes from a cannibalistic family. Okay. Slightly offensive. Slightly offensive, you know. And then, of course, why are they changing Splash Mountain? It's associated with Song of the South. What's wrong with that? (laughs) Did they happen to have any pictures of him in his in his sheet and hood? <laughs> like, like it's what's wrong with this and why are they doing that and it's so political. But what's you know what's really great is okay you know he's entitled to to his opinion absolutely. But then when you post it, you got to be prepared for everybody to kind of come back at you. And this is where you know th- this is where the best of Twitter comes. You know, so you get um, you know. I prefer, you know, uh, one of the people that responded, you know, said, I prefer to think of cast members not as individual humans who are there because they need to put food on their tables, but because they deserve to serve as living props in my Arrested (laughs) Development fantasy lifestyle. This guy doesn't want Walt Disney World. He wants Westworld. Yeah, really? Yeah. And then another person wrote, you know, as a white guy living life on the lowest difficulty setting, I'd like my theme park experience to stay exactly the same. Sure, that means some rides and shows are a bit insensitive to others, but it doesn't affect me. So you're here to accommodate me, right? Yeah. (laughs) And then what was nice was, you know, Patricia Arquette. The actress chimed in and said, this guy is taking the Christ out of Christian. If he doesn't understand why racist imagery isn't acceptable, I don't know what is. And then someone else responded to to that saying, well, I'm a Mexican and I grew up in L.A. My dad took me to Disneyland as a child and I didn't see myself in faces of anyone. Personally, I kind of like the woke Disney, and I finally feel like I belong at the park. And P.S. And if they were really woke, they would have dropped their prices. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and then my, my most favorite one is, won't someone please consider the delicate sensitivity of a middle-aged white man when designing a children's theme park? (laughs) Yeah. So, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and unfortunately, if there's anything that we've found over the last four years or so, it's that there's a lot of these people out there. Oh, absolutely. And the beauty of it is... If you don't like what a company does Mm -hmm. and you don't like their policies and their politics and how they conduct themselves, you don't have to do business with them. Absolutely. There's absolutely nobody that's twisting this Mm -mm. man's arm and forcing him to go and experience a park that offends him. Right. The Holy Land experience is not that far away. That's true. (laughs) We still have to get there, by the way. One day. (laughs) But if it's filled with. I don't know. What do you call a male ra- uh, uh, Karen? Kyle. Kyle. Yeah. yeah. If it's filled with Kyles, it's probably not worth the admission. <laughs> I don't know. I think it would kind of be fun to like do a twist on, you know. But I love how he, he feels it's necessary to point out that he's a Christian. Right. Even though you don't reflect any Christian ideas exactly. that's in your the, pose. That's the biggest thing is, isn't it love thy neighbor mm-hmm. as the thyself right isn't that one of like the big giant ones like no hate towards right and you real honestly okay yes they're gonna change their their policy on the hair and the tattoos or whatever 
you really think Tinkerbell is going to come out with a full sleeve? Tinkerbell's not going to have her hair in a bun. I, I have a feeling, um, I'm pretty sure, that when it comes to the face characters, they will have a different standard of right. costuming right. than what they're talking anybody else. about are when I go to a quick serve. Right. You know, the person they're behind actually the actually going to look like a real person. Right. The person at the quick serve is going to have what I hope Disney know. doesn't do. And just not to get off the subject. Sure. But sure. What I hope they don't do is what other retail industries do. Like if someone has a, a, a facial piercing. Mm hmm. They'll make them put a Band-Aid over it. Right. Then I feel compelled to say, what happened? Are you okay? Right. <laughs> if it's a facial piercing, just let it be a facial right, piercing. Right, right. And, and, and there are so many different, you know, things where you can just get a little ball. Right. You, or give them a little mouse. How adorable would that be? There you go. Let them be themed with their, you know. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, so... Anyway, well, this is another <laughs> another good example to make a, make fun of conservatives. Yep, yay! So anyway, that's it for our uh, uh, Disney detective. Mm -hmm. We'll be back in a minute with our tales from the edge of the other side of the room and galaxy thing. <laughs> For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. From the edge of the galaxy. <laughs> we have too much fun here. So, uh, from StarWarsNet.com, uh, it seems that Matt Latner, the voice of Anakin Skywalker in the clone Star Wars... Matt Lanter. Lanter, sorry. Uh, who does the voice of Anakin in Star Wars The Clone Wars and also in Star Wars Rebels, has confirmed that he has not seen the last of animated Anakin Skywalker and that he has done some work on a project that Lucasfilms has yet to announce. Dun, dun, dun. Or do you know no, what it, it is? Da, 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 oh, is that what it is? Oh, okay, sorry. Um, so while he was actually talking to Entertainment Weekly about an upcoming show, Netflix's adaptation of Juniper's Legacy, Matt had explained that he continued to voice Anakin in uh, very much that he sees it, you know, continuing, you know, in the future, even though um, Clone Wars had had ended. He said, um, you know, that there are some new Lucas animations going on and he's been part of it, but he just can't talk about it yet. And that, yes, you will see Anakin again. Uh, he says, I never quit, you know, to put Anakin down. So, you know, whatever I'm doing, if it's a video game or animation, I'll go and I'll go and do it. Um, Lucas Animation is obviously currently developing uh, The Bad Batch, which will actually begin airing next week on May the 4th. Um, and, and may the 4th be with you, too. And may the 4th be with you as well. So we'll be, you know, that's that's a, you know, national holiday for us. Um, so... Uh, he'll, you know, and uh, Disney Animation will also be working uh, and uh, working on a droid story as as well with ILM. Um, so there have been rumors. Obviously, we had talked about it before of of Star Wars Detour. 
Um, so obviously nothing new with that just yet. Um, but Matt's obviously done uh, Rebels. He did the Clone Wars. He also uh, voiced Anakin for Star Wars Force of Destiny, Battlefront 2, the Lego Star Wars Holiday Special. You know, he's done a, a whole bunch of things. So he's been part of the family for quite a while and was even in an episode of The Mandalorian uh, as well. So... He's one of our, our favorites from another show that he used to be on uh, as well. So it was kind of cool when we found out that he had this Star Wars legacy. Yeah. You know, as well. It was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. So. Yeah, that is cool. And yeah. I, I don't know what project he's referring to. Oh, OK. I thought you did <clears throat> the way you made it sound. But I have to assume he's probably going to show up at some <clears throat> point in time during the Bad Batch series. Right. Because that still kind of crosses over from the Clone Wars. I don't know where they're setting the timeline with that. Right, right. So that seems like the most likely one. Um, they haven't announced any other projects when they announced their full slate of right. projects that were in the works. So it'll be interesting to see if mm -hmm. there's another one that uh, we're going to get to see him in. Mm -hmm. Or hear him in, not right, see him. Right, right. But we'll get to see him in Netflix, Juniper's... Uh, Legacy, so yes. that show is what getting. We won't see him in his in Timeless anymore, <sighs> which is unfortunate because that was the show that, that was, we really yeah, liked. That was the show we liked. I think it was even a pick at some point in time, wasn't it? Was it was it around mm -hmm. long enough for that or no? I don't know. Maybe we'll do it just as a retrospective. There you go. We'll have to look at the, our list of shows that we we did. I don't the remember. weeks that I don't have anything good. I can <laughs> I can use that. <laughs> Hey, this is the show that I really liked. Good luck finding it. Well, you know, we've done I'm, the one that I'm doing today is a pick from 2014. So. Oh wow! Okay, um, All there's right, nothing sure. wrong with doing the classics. No, nothing wrong with that. What else do we have? So it seems that Ewan McGregor had admitted that he kind of felt a little humiliated by the idea that Disney could consider casting someone else to play Obi Wan Kenobi. Oh, I can't even. Kenobi, huh? <laughs> so he 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 was kind of upset about that because, but then he realized oh, it was the wrong part. <laughs> Th then he got really upset when he thought he was renaming their character. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. Um, so what had happened was, uh, so it seems that at the 2019 D23 Expo, it was announced that the series Obi Wan Kenobi was officially in the works for Disney Plus. And we obviously found out that Ewan McGregor was going to be reprising the role. And then we found out that Hayden Christensen was set to return as Anakin Skywalker, um, obviously known as Darth Vader, in case you didn't know. You mean they're Spoilers. not going to dress him up like a Tusken Raider and just have him be an extra in the background? That would kind of be funny. <laughs> um, so before Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, the series was confirmed, there were obviously rumors going around whether or not he was even going to come back to play the character. Um so in some recent interviews, he actually said he saw all the social media stuff and he was like, well, they better, you know, and, and a lot of the social media was like, well, you better cast Ian as Obi-Wan. Um, and, you know, he already knew that he had gotten the part, but he couldn't say anything. But that before everything, you know, he said he kind of felt humiliated to think that Disney might actually pick somebody else. And he said the reason before because of that was he knew that the um the original trilogy the the pre prequels. the prequels didn't do so well so he knew he wasn't you know like that top pick so he was really kind of hoping he was going to get picked to reprise the role but he could kind of understand if disney when you know you someone know. needs to explain to you and mcgregor that the prequels didn't weren't Disliked because of him, right? Okay. He was really good. He was, he was a good the highlight. Part. He was a good part of it. He was so. probably the highlight of the series. Yeah. So send him, send him a tweet and let him know that. I'll that let it, him know. You know, him and I are like that. We're, oh, we're right. <laughs> of course. So yeah. So he he was you know kind of feeling you know a little unloved because he he wasn't sure um, you know if they were going to pick him. But obviously we've already. Who else would you pick? Like who, I know. Who else could you bring back? Right. Exactly. Would and you the, just digitally ring back? Alec Guinness to play the part. But that's the thing is because it's been so many years since the prequels were done, he he's 50 years old now. So he's kind of at that perfect age. You're not the old hermit right. 
you know, of A New Hope, you're kind of in that in between. So how could you not? pick him and to... he's grown the beard for it absolutely too. he did all that work <laughs> <laughs> give it to him <laughs> nice well i'm very excited for that series yeah. because there's a lot of really good story to tell on that one wait i thought you weren't excited about it no this one i am oh Are you sure it was the other the the um what was the other one the other animated one that i wasn't too excited well the detours about. one yeah detours i'm not D- too excited about you know what I think we're going to have to go back to some of our you older... You go back and do the tale of the tape, and you tell me that uh, I wasn't excited. Because I don't know if you were all that excited. I was excited. I don't think so. Yeah, I was. I no, was. I don't think so. I, well, I might not have been, and then Solo dropped. So then anything <laughs> with that... <laughs> okay. All right. I got gotcha. you. Anything but Solo. Any, anything hey, that doesn't solo have someone... Hey, Solo 2! Anything that doesn't have someone saying, I'm going to be a pilot every five minutes, and I'm and I'm okay with all it. All right, all right. That was all we had for our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. Yep. We'll be back with our entertainment news in just a minute. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. for entertainment news. Dum, 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 dum. I wasn't even going to do it, and then I was just kind of like, all right, I should do it. Um, so for some local-ish uh, news uh, to, to kind of bring up with entertainment stuff, um, this uh, article came from the Press of Atlantic City. We're about 35 minutes or so from, from Atlantic City. Um, 30 minutes the way you drive, 45 the way I drive. <laughs> right, it depends on who's driving. So uh, this article had come out last week, and it talked about how they were planning to redo, I guess, part of one of the casinos down in Atlantic City, the showboat, where they're turning it into the largest arcade, I guess, in the area. Um, and so they're trying to, uh, make some family friendly entertainment. Cause obviously in Atlantic city, the majority of the, uh, items are, are not kid friendly. Uh, even though they've always said, you know, oh, it's a family place and it really isn't, you know, there might be a couple of small little it's, arcades. It's a family place because people live there. <laughs> right. There you go. So they are building an, uh, a family-friendly entertainment venue called the Lucky Snake at the Showboat. Um, and it's going to, I guess the first stage is actually slated to open on May 5th, which will include an arcade, which will be the largest in the state. Then there's also going to be a sports bar, performance stages, a speakeasy, and some meeting spaces. So obviously not the whole thing is kid friendly because I'm guessing you're not taking your kid to a speakeasy. Maybe not yet. It's I don't a know. speakeasy arcade. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, so the idea, uh, so, you know, in the, in the article, they talk about, um, that they're going to uh, also it's going to create about 100 jobs. And the idea is also that they are proposing a uh, indoor water park as well. That'll cost ninety seven million dollars uh, to so get they're, in <laughs> no, oh, to okay. build. So they're hoping to actually break ground on that next month. 
Um, they're also talking about doing a outdoor stadium that I guess has some sort of dome over it, I guess, to protect Which from. Which would then make it an indoor stadium. Yeah, it was weird because it was like an outdoor stadium with a dome. And I'm like, okay, so maybe just to protect you from the elements? I don't know. Um, you know, so they're trying to basically bring a, a bunch of entertainment things to this area. Um, you know, one person kind of described it as uh, a Dave and Buster's and more on steroids. So it'll have more than just arcade games. Uh, it'll have other things and that they're also talking about um, having some sort of um, uh, rewards program for, you know, return visitors uh you know a value program or, or something so some way to track you of course because that's the a rewards program um you know and and that they were talking about how you'd be able to get um vacations and other things you could win a new car <laughs> one of the things was talking about a car too so you know, if you think we're trying to save up for like a jukebox, could you imagine trying to save up to Well, win? you know, I, I, I hear all the stuff that they're looking to do and I can't help but wonder, have they heard of this little thing called COVID? Mm. Let's put a water park and let's put an indoor stadium right, and right. let's put a meeting rooms and let's put in a speakeasy and an indoor arcade. Right, like, right. Um, you guys realize that people aren't going to be all rubbing well, elbows, and, right? And that's the thing is, look at, what is it, American Dream? Exactly. Up in North Jersey that they they were building like that. pipe dream. You know, they were building that for years and then. Well, it's still not pulling in anywhere near the numbers it was supposed well, to. Well, and that's the thing is because then the pandemic hit right as they were getting ready to open and, and they were going to be opening in, in phases. Right. And they couldn't even do that because everything shut and down. They to, so they need to work with their marketing department because when I hear the lucky snake, you know what I picture? <laughs> I picture Vegas Vacation, that obscure off-the-strip casino where they play, like, rock, paper, scissors mm -hmm. at or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm picturing. For yeah, it, it, and especially when, you know, you have your um, news conference and you have a big, giant python around your neck. That's not really selling my right. daughter on, right. ooh, it's family let, friendly. Me, let me go. <laughs> yes, we, we don't discriminate. We eat any family. Right. So, you know, we're, we're not too far from it. So I could totally see us not planning to go. Uh, you know, I'll be honest with you. There. This is not drawing me to Atlantic City. <laughs> well, that's you what I'm saying. A if lot it, more than this. If we just happen to kind of be in the area, like, hey, let's go and. Like if we get on for AC Comic Con. Right. And maybe we can go play games with a snake. <laughs> Do they play snakes and ladders? I was gonna say, is the snake there signing autographs? <laughs> is that their mascot? You gonna have a guy dressed in a snake costume? <sighs> that would be kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Only in Jersey. <laughs> Only in Jersey. <laughs> what else we got? Uh, so we have two Falcon Winter Soldier stories. Uh, the first one was actually one that you uh, brought to my attention from the UK. That was actually kind of questioning will there be another season of the series um so obviously uh the falcon winter soldier had its finale last friday um and people were kind of wondering okay now that it came to an end is there going to be a season two because they really didn't say whether or not it was a one-off um you know it was described as a mini series which led fans to believe that it was kind of wrapped up but then you know various different people talked to a couple of different producers and things and you know other people said oh there's plenty of story still to come but then again the way that they kind of ended it are they just going to move on to the next movie because that's really you know and and that's kind of the th the other stories that kind of came out as well was that okay well now that this ended this is giving way to captain america 4 really so do you need to do another season of it or is it going to be one of those hey we're going to come out with a big movie and then we do a season you know in between for like maybe minor characters i don't know it really doesn't and the article 
wasn't really sure either. They were like, oh, well, you know, because this was only a limited series, six episodes, we're supposed to maybe get six more and maybe, you know, March of 2022, we'll see it. So a lot of it's speculation because really nothing has come out saying, yes, there's going to be a second season or no, we're going right into the next movie. So there hasn't been, you know, much definitive out yet. But the one thing that you mentioned is that the documentary about the series drops on Friday on Disney Plus. So I wonder if there'll be something in that for us to kind of have a, a yeah, hint. And, and I think the show still got legs. I mean, who doesn't want to see another counseling session between, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier where they just sit and do a stare off? I mean, that's quality television right there. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. What else do we have, dude? <laughs> So, you know, to, to bring a, a, a happier, uh, for, for our new Captain America, um, Anthony Mackie, uh, was on, um, with, uh, Stephen Colbert, uh, earlier this week. And, uh, they were talking about the finale of, of Falcon Winter Soldier and, and whatnot. But what was really cute was that, um, Stephen Colbert surprised Anthony with a uh, his action figure, his new action figure as Captain America. And he's like, "Oh, have you seen this?" He goes, "No, I haven't even I haven't even seen this. I didn't even know it was there." And what was funny? So he takes it out. He goes, "Oh, I, I have one that's still in the box, so I'm keeping that one. But you know, here's the one to play with." And Anthony Mackey goes, "You know, that looks a little bit like Jamie Foxx." You know, and and they go on to, you know, to talk about, you know, he goes, no, 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 that that's really cool, you know, and everything. And, and in the in the interview, they you know, he's talking about it and he's like, yeah, he goes, just so you know, he goes, that's all me under the suit. I I didn't want a muscle suit. You know, that that's my pride, you know, right there. That was me, you know, working out seven films in, uh, you know, to, to make sure I had the Dorito. You know, he goes, that's what they call it with your shoulders and, and everything. So. He's like, yeah, I, I were I worked hard to to make that look good. So it was a, a really uh, you know cute episode, and you know nice to see that he has his you know really cool looking uh, action figure. You know, it's funny. I'm I'm surprised, <coughs> that, and I'm sure he was probably joking about the whole thing. But with the technology that they have today, with the laser scanning of the faces, and oh, 3D true, printing yeah, and everything, yeah. like you don't have somebody who's there hand sculpting right, the visuals right. anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because if you look back at like the original um, uh, Star Wars figures mm -hmm. yeah. and you look at, at Luke Skywalker, it looks nothing like Mark right. Hamill. Right. And you look at the later ones and the later ones are all laser done. And, and we had the one show that we did watch where they take you, they took you through and, mm -hmm. and showed you how Kenner actually modeled it. And, and they had sculptors that were in there that were, that were crafting these things. Mm -hmm. And because of the way the molds were done, you couldn't do really detailed right um impressions of them but in this case here i don't know you know you can't you can't really see from the from well the and the other thing have, too yeah. is like his goggles and stuff they don't come off so oh, it, okay. it looks like they're sculpted on so i'm kind of surprised they didn't make one where you could you know right right take well, and i'm off, sure this so. is one of 75 that you're going to be able to buy, I'm sure. Absolutely. That's that's the way our toy marketing works. Mm -hmm. And that's the way Disney works, you know. Yep. That's the only reason they gave the new costumes, so they can sell new action figures off of them. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's all we have for our entertainment news this week. We'll yep. be right back with our insightful picks of the week. Go for your insightful pick. So my insightful pick is a documentary. Um, it is actually a documentary that's based off of, that was inspired by a 2013 Korean documentary, which was called My Love, Don't Cross That River. Um, and so they kind of took that idea and did a six-part series uh, called My Love, 
six stories of true love. And what they do is they take six longtime couples in different parts of the world to share their decades long love in this very tender portrait that's filmed over the course of a year. Um, so they, they have various different couples. Um, so you have one couple from Vermont, another from Spain. Then we have Japan, South Korea, Brazil, uh, and India. Um, and m the majority of the couples have either been together between 40 and 60 years. Um, and it, it's basically just a year in their life, you know, how they, they deal with things. Um, I'm only, I'm on the third episode now, so I'm almost halfway through. Um, and it was interesting just to see, you know, how after so many years of being together, how they still love each other, how they still care about each other. Um, you know, the, the couple from the United States, they're making their plans for when they pass away so that their children don't have to make the, the arrangements for them so that, you know, they're taking care of everything on their own. They're letting their children know, um, you know, one of the, the kind of touching scenes is they're both getting cremated, but she's having her ashes where her parents are. And he's going to have his ashes on the farm that they still live on that he was born on. And, she, you know, she makes the, the statement of, you know, when the north wind blows, his ashes will come up to visit me. And when the wind blows the opposite way, I'll go down to visit him. So it was just kind of sweet the way that they, uh, you know, they mentioned it. Um, and then the the couple from Spain you know, it's interesting that <laughs> they're, they're, you know, talking about how their village used to have like 20 different families and now there's like six of them. And but they're content still, you know, doing their own thing. They finally go on a, a vacation to the beach. They've never been to the beach before and they've been married almost 60 years. Um, and it was just so cute. And and they take like a little ferry boat and there's some little 10 year old kid going, you've never been on a boat before? And they're like, no, this is our first time. Wow, good for you. You know, it's just cute. And, and um, you know, it's kind of sad because in the beginning of, of the second episode, he's going to get tested to make sure that he can get his driver's license renewed. And he fails. So he can't, they take away his license. So they impound his car. And, you know, you think, oh, he's going to be really down and depressed. And they get an Uber and he's flirting with his wife in the backseat of the car. You know, he was like, all right, whatever. It is what it is. And, you know, we'll go pick our nuts and do our thing like we always do. And all right. So we get somebody else to drive, you know, so it's just to see where your relationship goes you know, throughout the years and that, you know, it's not always about the good. It's about, you know, the bad, but that, you know, you're going to get to that good. And what's interesting, and it was funny because I, I was kind of wondering about it, was after the first episode, they don't tell you like what happened because it, it and it and the way that they do each episode is they do it in seasons. So it starts in whatever season and then they'll do, you know, and they kind of go through. So you, you follow them for out, for the whole year, like I said. And they actually filmed it in all of 2019 and finished in 2020, right, you know, before everything shut down. Um, but they don't give you updates of everything. And the idea is that, you know, their love and their life is immortal. You don't need to know what happened because we told you everything that needed. So... You know, it's a little slow. It's not very, you know, because these are people that are in their 60s, 70s and 80s. So they're not. But it's just interesting to hear their stories and, you know, and and what's important in their life. And nice. in this day and age, you know, that's kind of what we need a little bit more of. Good pick. Thank you. So for my pick this week, I'm going way back to 2014, pre-pandemic. Uh, this is a documentary called The Secrets of Quantum Physics on Amazon Prime. Professor Jim Al-Khalili reveals how Einstein thought he'd found a fatal flaw in quantum physics 
that implies that subatomic particles can communicate faster than light. He discusses how robins navigate using quantum entanglement, how our sense of smell is touched by ethereal quantum vibrations, and even how physics might play a role in evolution. It's a two-part, it's two-episode uh, miniseries. Episode one traces the path from the 1800s through the Jazz Age to the hippie era, highlighting the insights into light which illuminated the true nature of reality, the conflicts with the ideas of Albert Einstein, and recreating the test that resolves this conflict devised by John Bell in the 1960s. The episode is illustrated with vaudevillian analogies, including playing cards with the devil, demonstrating the thematic relations to Lewis Carroll. Episode 2 ponders the possibility that quantum physics explains some biological mysteries, including the use of quantum entanglement for navigation by the European robin, the use of quantum vibrations by uh, humans to smell, and the part played by the uncertainty principle in evolution. Through all the incredibly in-depth analysis and details Professor Al-Khalili makes use of simple and easy-to-understand analogies to help even the most scientifically uninitiated understand what are some of the most complex and poorly understood aspects of our universe. Um, quantum physics has always been something that's fascinated me, and the way that this series tackles it is it's done in such a way that makes it almost simplistic the way that it explains it. Okay. They actually take you into the lab. They show you actual experiments that happen. Um, they explain probably the, the um, most famous quantum physics experiment that's ever been done, and that's passing light through a piece of a paper or, or a uh, oh, okay. barrier with mm -hmm. two slits and how it, they interact. Um, the closest analogy I had was um, they had made a um, a movie or a TV movie out of Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time, where he talks about space-time using very similar um, down-to-earth analogies and makes that very complicated thing seem very relatable and very understandable. Uh, Professor Al-Khalili is one uh, that's been on a number of documentaries that I've watched uh, for physics, and he he's got this magnetic personality on the screen that, that makes him very easy to relate to. Okay. Um, and you kind of need that sort of a host um, to, to sort of get these points across. Michio, Professor Michio Kako from uh, New York is, a, is the same way. Okay. Um, he's, he's relatable to the point that he can bring these very complex concepts across so that people can understand them. I'm not a scientist, I'm not a physicist, I'm not a mathematician, and it, it's not only is it um, educational, it's entertaining to watch if, if you're at all curious about the universe. The Secrets of Quantum Physics, streaming now on Amazon Prime. So that was all we had this week. Mm-hmm. Busy one this week. Yep. No afterthoughts, though, right? Nope. We do have something coming up in a little bit, though, don't we? Don't we have a Monster Mania that we'll be attending soon? Yes, but tickets are already sold out, so... So we don't talk about them so when we're we sold can't... out. Well, we can talk about it. It's, it's kind of mean. Well, aren't we looking to do something else over in Philly? We're just looking into that now. Oh, we were thinking about doing something at the Philadelphia Zoo. Right. What is that called? Uh, big something. <laughs> big monsters. <laughs> no. I don't know what it's called. Big event. I or thought something. you looked it up. I did. did. I didn't. Hold on. Oh, geez. I thought you were going to throw I that in at the end. I, I think that's why you were oh looking it God. up. I was looking it up just so that we could. Dinosaurs. It big. Big, freaking giant dinosaurs with freaking laser with beams <laughs> not no laser beams no oh. big time big time it's called big time it's life in an endangerous age and themed tickets are required so regular park tickets are about $24 for adults and then if you want to go see these big giant 
dinosaurs, it's an extra six bucks. And they are life-size scale dinosaurs. Life-size, big, giant. So there's a dinosaur that's like three stories tall. They're audio animatronic. Right. So there's 24 life-size creatures. You get to learn about them, and they give you a little, you know, history. Do you get to figure out why the Tyrannosaurus Rex has such little arms? No. 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 It's so he doesn't have to pick up the check at dinner? Right. So you get to walk along an area where there's 24 of them, including a 98-foot... Uh, something saurus. Something saurus and a 15 foot tall T Rex. I would have thought he would have been taller. I would have thought they would have been taller. <laughs> yeah. Funny, he's taller on <laughs> he's TV. Taller. <laughs> it doesn't say when it's ending, but it did start the end of March. So get there as soon as you can at the Philadelphia Zoo. Right. So obviously, again, you need to do advanced tickets just like everything else. You know, these days, um, yeah, and that they have specialized food, too. So You can get a brontosaurus burger. No, they don't have that. Uh, brontosaurus were extinct by this point. No, I'm sorry, a brontosaurus barbecue burger. Aha, uh-huh, so, see? So, I was wrong, you were right. So, yeah. Get that, I got that on tape, because that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Just like you saying that you were excited about Obi Wan, right? And Obi. That doesn't happen very often because you Obi Wan doesn't do it for me. You you weren't excited Little, about give it. Give me a Darth Vader. Darth Vader does it for me. Obviously, we. Yeah. I think which we know is why that. I'm excited because Darth Vader is going to be on the show now. But you were like, "Oh, it's Hayden Christensen." Yeah, he's not really Darth Vader. As long as James Earl Jones voices him, he's not going good. to. Why not? I don't know. He should. Oh, whatever. He will. I'll call him up and, and tell him. Because you're like this I'm like, I'm like that. We're besties. Uh, before we go, I do want to encourage folks to subscribe to the podcast. <gasps> no if you want to subscribe, <laughs> if you want to Why subscribe want to, to our videos, you get videos of all of our shows on the network. You look up uh, Insights Into Things. Uh, audio versions of this podcast can be found as Insights in Entertainment. And uh, we are listed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. Anywhere you can get a podcast, you can get us. Uh, we would also encourage folks to reach out to us and give us some feedback. Tell us to stop being stupid and stuff like that. Or maybe you like that. I don't know. Well, I mean, this show was about as organized as a soup sandwich this week. It was all my fault, though. I don't blame you for it. I was going to say soup sandwich sounds really good. Have you tried to eat a soup sandwich? Well, I've had soup in a bread bowl, so that's technically the same. See, that's cheating there. Whatever. Take two pieces of bread and put soup in the middle and see what happens. That sounds really good, actually. Yeah, it's messy. You kind of be an well, open yeah. face sandwich. Well, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> you can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things if you, you wanted to go there. You can email us at comments at insights into things dot com. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. We are on Instagram at insights into things. Uh, the audio versions of all of our podcasts are at podcast.insights into entertainment.com. High res versions of our videos can be found on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. And you can find us on Twitch where we stream usually what yeah, five, five, days. five now that we're recording five, during the week we don't stream on the oh weekends. okay so five days a week we're live two days a week uh on twitch.tv uh backslash insights into things and if you are an amazon prime subscriber what you can throw a subscription our way and we'd really like that or you can get links to all that stuff on our website at www because you stole my line you you can get links. Oh, to, are we all <laughs> upset now? <laughs> you can get links to all that on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And that's it. Another one in the books. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>